The outdoor clothing industry prides itself on its ability to connect people with the outdoors. These brands promote themselves as well-made, high-quality, and built to last. This, quote, built to last mantra, as I'm calling it, justifies a higher than average price point for their products. None more so than Arcteryx. Hey team, welcome back to another Levi Save the World Hildebrand episode, the channel where we prove that you don't need to be a hero to save the planet. A few months ago, I made a video about Patagonia where I broke down some of those environmental policies that justify their slightly higher than average price tag. But when I was making that video, I realized that Arcteryx has prices above most other outdoor companies pretty well across the board. And so I wanted to figure out why, but I don't own any Arcteryx. So, come on, we gotta go. <laughs> hey, I was hey, sending a message. How you doing? Good, Good. how are you? Dude, do, do you mind being on camera for a second? So this is my friend Tian Xu. Tian Xu, how much did you spend on this, on this uh, Arcteryx jacket? Around 400 bucks. 400 bucks for yeah. this? That's, that's actually one of the more affordable jackets. Yeah. Uh, it's, yes. it's still expensive though. It is expensive. So in today's video, we're breaking down why Arcteryx is so expensive and what built for life means. No, seriously, look at this. Eddie Bauer, guaranteed for life. I mean, you can't, you can't write this. I just walked by this on the street. All right, so for today's video, we have Two jackets, neither of which are mine. <laughs> In my left hand is the Beta AR jacket, which is kind of like a shell, and it goes for a market value of 700 Canadian dollars. In my right hand, we have the Proton LT hoodie, and right now you can buy it online for 350 Canadian dollars. So let's see what these things are all about. Arcteryx, like most outdoor clothing companies, has a pretty thorough environmental policy. Theirs has a distinct focus on their efforts in creating the most long-lasting products. The idea behind this being that if people can buy one high-quality jacket, then they don't have to buy any more. Durability and performance. From beginning, Arcteryx products have been guided by these two principles. As the rise of fast fashion increases the apparel industry's social and environmental impacts, we continue striving to build durable gear that performs season after season. In addition to this, they cover their bases on other fronts as well. They have an enormous production facility located right here in Vancouver, Canada, that provides over 10% of their total production, which is impressive for being sourced locally. They repair pieces of clothing that are returned to their stores, and they comply with third-party programs like Blue Sign and Vancouver Aquariums Oceanwise. But these efforts are not nearly at the level of Patagonia's dedication. So if durability and performance are key, then how next level is this company to justify the extra cost? To understand this, we need to pull back a little bit and understand what's going on in the outdoor clothing industry as a whole. Companies like Patagonia, North Face, and Arcteryx make race cars. Now, I know this is probably a very strenuous metaphor for you to take in right now, but bear with me for a second. Because a race car is designed for racing. Every piece and part inside of the vehicle is vigorously tested to perform at the most extreme of circumstances. And that's what Arcteryx does very, very well with outdoor clothing. <sighs> Thank God that metaphor is over. Oh, yeah. See, Arcteryx is kind of a leader in innovation. They invented the waterproof zipper. They also improved on the world famous Gore-Tex material, which was originally used in some of the first NASA spacesuits. They have a whole division called LEAF, which is devoted to outfitting armed forces and law enforcement officers across North America. These guys literally design their products to be resilient against the most horrible and nasty conditions on Earth to give you the best possible chance of survival if you find yourself dangling off of a 3,000 foot cliff. Oh, Jesus. Could probably green screen that out and post, eh? 
What I'm trying to say is that for most of the people who are watching this video, the insane technology that goes into making this coat is just totally unnecessary. Yet, the outdoor clothing industry has grown by leaps and bounds, and today is worth more than four billion dollars. So does this mean that there's just way more people going outside and enjoying nature? Not quite. And let me show you what I mean. Step into any Mountain Equipment Co-op or REI in the States and you'll see what's driving this new movement. It's sort of a wave of weekend warrior outdoor enthusiasts. And they look very different than the classic outdoorsy types that places like Arcteryx were typically used to marketing to. These new outdoorsy people like being outside, but they prefer to be within the guardrails and in designated camping spots. And with all of these people taking a sudden interest in the outdoors, it means that eco-conscious companies are caught up in the game of fast fashion. Let's get out of here. But it's not just a whole world of new consumers either. There are new competitors in the market for outdoor clothing. Places like Lululemon and Nike are joining the game to tap into this emerging market and it means a whole new definition of high quality outdoor clothing. Even Patagonia's chief product officer was quoted as saying in an interview, the reality is, is that construction, performance, and material specifications have gotten to a point where 80% of what's out there functions reasonably well and can help you get through whatever you're wanting to do outside. And that's a crazy statement because that means, this means that the extremes are getting even more extreme. And that means that Arcteryx has had to go even harder at being better. This means that every year we are going to see a new jacket. Every new design a little tiny step closer to perfection. Shaving hairs of thickness off of the shells and milligrams of weight out of the linings, everything in an attempt to separate themselves from the 80%. So chances are, if you're watching this video, you don't need an Arcteryx jacket, but you can appreciate and be in awe of the incredible technology that they put into their products because it is probably the best in class. But I wanna finish by talking about this built to last mantra that we hear throughout this industry. And I think that it's in our hands as the consumer to be aware of what that's telling us and how we react to it. Because it feels good to think, oh, I will buy this jacket and it will be the last jacket that I ever own. But the reality is that that's not really how it works. People get tired of the things that they buy and so they put it away on the shelf and they buy another one. If this is something that you are considering buying, I implore you to think about how you will use it and whether or not you have something that can already do what it would provide. Because as Patagonia said in their famous ad campaign, the built to last motif only works if you don't buy this jacket. But hey, that is a wrap on this video. We are done and I want to thank you. I want to thank the 2000 people who have subscribed to this channel and the many, many more that have watched my videos because it's really inspiring to me to be able to make this kind of content. Every day I'm thinking about all of the cool and amazing things that are making our world a better place and it's way better than thinking about all of the crappy stuff. So if you wanna join me on this party, you wanna join the team, hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video, you can literally like it down below. And thank you for watching.